Good pasture syndrome is an autoimmune disease that primarily affects two organs, the lungs and the kidneys. It causes inflammation and eventually bleeding in the lungs, which leads to hemoptysis, or coughing up of blood, and hematuria, or blood in the urine, a pattern first recognized by the pathologist Dr. Ernest Goodpasture. To understand Goodpasture syndrome, let's start by thinking about the basement membrane which is a thin, sheet-like layer of tissue made of protein that keeps the epithelium stuck firmly to the actual organ, kind of like double-sided tape, which keeps wrapping paper stuck to the gift. This basement membrane is made up of various proteins, but the major one is collagen, and since basement membrane exists throughout every organ system, it's no wonder that collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body. As far as proteins go, collagen's a pretty sweet-looking one, with a triple helix structure composed of three separate chains that are intertwined like braided hair. Each of the chains can be one of six types, named alpha-1 through alpha-6, and the most common form of collagen found in the basement membrane is collagen type 4, which is made by mixing and matching these six alpha chains. One version of type 4 collagen combines the alpha-3, alpha-4, and alpha-5 chains. Another combines two alpha-1s and an alpha-2, and a third version has two alpha 5s and an alpha 6. And this list of combinations goes on. So it turns out that the alpha 3, alpha 4, alpha 5 variant is most common in the glomerular basement membranes of the kidneys and the alveolar basement membrane of the lungs. In good pasture syndrome, autoantibodies bind to a specific part of the alpha 3 chain that's usually hidden deep within the folded chains. This is an example of a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, because once these autoantibodies, usually IgG but rarely IgM or IgA, bind to the alpha-3 chain, they activate the complement system. Now the complement system is a series of small proteins present in the blood that act like an enzymatic cascade to fight off bacterial and other pathogenic invasions. When the FAB portion of the IgG molecule inappropriately binds to the alpha-3 chain, C1, which is the first of the complement proteins, binds to the FC portion of the IgG molecule. This bound C1 is now activated, and it starts engaging other members of the complement family, C2 through C9. Some of these are activated by being cleaved or chopped by an enzyme. The cleaved fragments C3A, C4A, and C5A act as chemotactic agents, meaning they attract certain cells like neutrophils. Once neutrophils join the party, they dump a bunch of enzymes like peroxidase, myeloperoxidase, and proteinase 3, which all cause free oxygen radicals to form which damage the basement membrane as well as the nearby endothelium and the underlying organ itself. Genetic risk factors for good pasture syndrome include having genes that encode a specific type of immune molecule called HLA-DR15, which is used to identify and bind to foreign molecules. Environmental risk factors, on the other hand, also play a role, and it relates back to the fact that the autoantibodies bind to a specific part of the alpha-3 chain that's usually hidden deep within the folded chains. When the collagen molecules are damaged by infection, smoking, oxidative stress, or some hydrocarbon-based solvents, as in the case of people who work in the dry cleaning industry, these antigenic regions on the alpha-3 chain get exposed to the antibodies present in the blood of genetically susceptible people. This also helps explain why good pasture syndrome specifically affects the kidney and the lungs. The kidney filters toxins from the blood, so as they pass through the basement membrane of the kidney, they likely expose parts of the alpha-3 chain. And similarly, the lungs get exposed to various inhaled toxic substances, like cigarette smoke, once again exposing the parts of the alpha-3 chain that leads to good pasture syndrome. In good pasture syndrome, lung symptoms usually come before kidney symptoms. Damage to the basement membrane in the lungs can cause widespread damage to the alveoli, the small air sacs where gas exchange happens between the air we breathe in and the blood, leading to a cough and hemoptysis, or blood in the sputum. The damage to the alveoli can also impair the ability of the lungs to exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide, leading to a pattern of restrictive lung disease. Damage to the basement membrane in the kidney affects its ability to filter properly, allowing blood to get into the urine, called hematuria, 
as well as protein to get into the urine, called proteinuria. And this fits the pattern of nephritic syndrome. Now, the best way to diagnose good pastor syndrome is by doing a biopsy, usually in the kidney, because that's the best studied organ in this disease. Under a microscope, you'll usually see inflammation of the basement membrane. And if fluorescent proteins that bind to the anti-basement membrane antibodies are used, they light up in a linear pattern along the basement membrane. In the past, good pastor syndrome was usually fatal, but aggressive treatment with corticosteroids and immunosuppressive agents, as well as plasmapheresis, which involves filtering out the fluid part of the blood, or plasma, has improved the prognosis with fewer individuals developing chronic renal failure and needing dialysis. All right, as a quick recap, good pastor syndrome is an autoimmune disease in which the immune system attacks the alpha-3 chain of type 4 collagen present in the basement membrane. The specific spot that gets affected is usually well hidden, but gets exposed by various toxins, which is why the disease predominantly affects the lungs and kidneys, causing symptoms like hemoptysis and hematuria. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.